HRM says people living in five tent encampments in the city, including a grand parade, will have to leave later this month. The question is, where will they go? Michael Cavalin is executive director for the Affordable Housing Association of Nova Scotia. Sir, first of all, from where you sit, how do you feel about HRM's intentions uh, to clear people out of some of the uh, tent encampments? Uh, it's always a difficult day when when people are, are kind of being left with a with a impossible what they would call an impossible choice for themselves, right? That they've built something that is stable, they built something that they can depend on. Um, that they're calling their own and, and you know, government is is kind of now recognizing it, it's time for folks to move along. And, and certainly, you know, that that's always a struggle. I think, you know, in he listening to um, HRM's uh, press conference yesterday, uh, it seems like they're doing a lot of the right things that you're supposed to do. They're giving people notice. They're giving people time. Um, they're offering up options. Um, but the, the reality is that the options that are currently available won't work for everybody. Um, and if they will work for everybody, it does take that time to build trust, right? To so upend what you know as your home, whether whether that's that's a decent home or not, which you know is the place where you're sheltering and, and go elsewhere. Um, that takes a, takes a big leap um, and a big leap of trust in the next place that you're going. And so, um, you know, it's, it's a difficult time for, I would say, for folks living in encampments. I think it's a difficult time for the people that have been working extremely hard to support them. And, and you know, that that's kind of the you know, the hope is, and I think, you know, all of us in our community will continue to watch that the municipality and, and the folks that will support these folks are uh, are going to do the right thing and, and, and kind of take that approach where folks have, have choice as, as they move along. Yeah, and, and where do they go? I mean, and I mean, I know there's hotel rooms and so on. You know, is, is a hotel room a, a fix for some folks? Well, th that's part of the challenge, right? Folks are living in encampments um, because the options that are available to them at the time are, are no better than the option that they currently have. Um, and so, you know, the shelters and the hotels and the other kind of indoor options still aren't a solution to the real challenge that folks are facing, which, you know, homelessness in its definition is lack of housing. And so wh while the, the indoor solutions are, are an option for folks, it's not a solution to really what folks are facing, which is a lack of housing. The solution to homelessness is housing. And so, you know, our hope as well is that government, as they've continued to in the past, make announcements um, on new, more affordable housing. Um, and, you know, that's what we do here at the Affordable Housing Association. Part of what we do is to build decent, forever affordable housing and, and invest in the ones that we can um, and provide that to folks. So it's there forever. It's an asset that belongs to the community, not to our organization in a sense. So, yeah, I think, you know, the, the dialogue about moving people out of encampments into other options, that's not a, that's not the permanent solution. That's a temporary kind of option. But taking homelessness, visible homelessness and turning it into invisible homelessness in the community isn't the solution. We need more housing. Um, and, you know, there's lots, lots happening. You know, it's uh, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Uh, and we're still just at the start of what's really going to be required to, yeah. to really end or resolve what we're dealing with. I know today the Minister of Community Services called the, that initiative at the Doubletree Hotel uh, at the foot of the uh, McDonald Bridge there a success because some people have moved on from there to stable housing. How much of that is happening, do you think? I think it's you know the the individual the population of individuals experiencing homelessness it's not a, it's not a cup full of the same people it's a fluid group so people are entering homelessness people are leaving homelessness a lot of people resolve their homelessness on their own or with the support of the community um, but really what we're seeing is um, in homelessness in our community in Halifax has been increasing and I would say right across the region for for quite a long time and the numbers just continue to go up um, and that's just a challenge to to the reality of the cost of living um, you know the, the the lack of mental health support, the lack of available and accessible affordable housing, as I talked about. All these things are really contributing to folks falling through the cracks and having no other choice but to kind of seek out help. So yeah, the, 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 the double tree, the overlook, all of the options government's been investing in are very important options. Um, but it's just, it's a challenge when the the, the kind of cup is filling faster, the, 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 the number of people coming in are faster than we can resolve them as a community at this stage. and. Um, you know, again, as we talk about the long-term solution will be more housing and more affordable housing and more supported housing. I mean, folks don't end up living in encampments by, by choice. It, something's happened to them mm -hmm. and, and they're having a, it's a, it's a crisis. It's a, a catastrophe of their life to have that to be your only option. So and I think, you know, a lot, a lot of discussion around the folks, 
you know, well, they better move on. I've heard that, right? Oh, there's op- there's better options now, but the- people are living in a catastrophe and they're living with trauma. And, and I think we need to recognize these are, these are people, these are our neighbors, these are our community members, and we have a responsibility to kind of uh, treat them with dignity as we, as we work with them to the solution that's going to work for them. And just quickly before I let you go, you know, you, you're, you're mentioning affordable housing, we need housing. What progress are we making on that front in terms of increasing affordable housing in this province in, let's say, the last six or 12 months? I think we're seeing more progress. We're seeing a lot of the government programs really start to, to filter down, uh, but it's still, you know, I've said this before, it's still not enough, right? It's, we, we, we really need, um, from all the different levels of government in Nova Scotia, billions of dollars invested in the affordable seg- seg- sector of housing to really see, see a resolution. So, you know, it's still early, I would say, from, from a government spending cycle on, on how those investments will be made. But a lot of encouraging things have been happening. And, you know, again, this marathon is taken one step at a time. So every measure that's taken, every new proposal, every new development will, will have impact. The hope is that it has enough impact. So that that you know, I think, as a as a sector, it's not just government's job. As a, as a community housing sector, as a non for profit housing sector, as you know, even developers are out there building and, and pulling permits. All that has impact, and I think the the sector has uh, recognized we need to do our part, kind of globally in 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 in, in, in our province. Um, it's just a matter of time. So you know, we're going to build. We're going to invest in all the things we need to, and, and we can. Michael Cavallon, we thank you for this. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Have a great evening.